Over the past few decades, advances in technology have improved our lives in both big and small ways. From phones we unlock with our faces, to devices counting our steps, to filters that turn us into talking cats. Oh, I've always wanted to try this. What's the matter, Batman? Don't like a kitty with claws? <laughs> Technology is supposed to make our lives more convenient and more equitable because unlike people, computers and algorithms can't be racist. But what if they totally are? Let me explain in a segment called, How Did We Get Here? Now, technology exists to make our lives better, but sometimes things that are there to make life easier actually make some people's lives a lot harder. The problems can show up in tiny, annoying ways, like this story about automatic soap dispensers that don't recognize black hands. That's right. Think of automatic soap dispensers like the TV show Friends. They're clean, they're everywhere, and they're totally unaware that black people exist. But here's the thing. When it comes to technology and black people, it's not just our hands that are getting done dirty. First, let's talk about something called artificial intelligence, or AI. That's basically when computers are programmed to do things that usually take human brains. It's how you get personalized shopping recommendations on Instagram, or why Google Maps can tell you how to avoid traffic, or why anyone who named their daughter Alexa is going to be apologizing for the rest of their life. <laughs> Alexa, I'm sorry. Alexa, shut up. Not you, Alexa. No, no, Alexa, I'm gonna kill you. Not you, Alexa. You, Alexa, die. Live, Alexa. <laughs> now, we like to think that computers are neutral, but the fact is, AI is programmed by people, and people are biased. Bias is part of the human condition, like love or death, or having to whisper ready tidy, lefty loosey every time you open a jar. But that bias has real world consequences. Take Google. You know, the place where you search your ex-boyfriend's name six times a day, even though you know you can do better because that idiot only owns one towel. <laughs> In 2015, a black software developer named Jackie Alcine realized that when Google Photos used AI to categorize his pictures, they sorted images of him and his black friend into a folder titled Gorillas which is insanely racist. In fact, it's so racist, I give it six months before that algorithm gets its own Fox News show. <laughs> and Google's racist AI isn't just a one-time thing. In one experiment, it labeled a thermometer held by a white hand as an electronic device and the same object held by a dark-skinned hand as a gun, which is unacceptable because in this country, the only people allowed to confuse random objects for guns are the police officers. <laughs> but algorithms that label pictures are just the tip of an extremely racist iceberg. There's also an arbitrary face scanning algorithm that claims it can use AI to find out who is best for a job by scanning their face. There's an algorithm that claims to predict which criminals will reoffend that has been known to falsely flag black defendants as future criminals at almost twice the rate as white defendants. Now, there's a medical algorithm that favors white patients over sick or black ones, which is unforgivable in a system that already treats black people like an afterthought. Unfortunately, in America, getting appropriate health care is a lot like playing chess. When you're white, you always get to go first. That's why my strategy in either one is to just yell, king me, and see if I get anything extra. <laughs> but as bad as all those other examples are, perhaps the most alarming use of AI involves facial recognition technology. Recently, a black computer scientist named Joy Blumwini found out that she couldn't get the robots she worked with to detect her face. She couldn't figure out why until Halloween when she wore a white mask. That's when the robots immediately recognized her as a person. <laughs> Let me repeat that. A black woman literally wasn't recognized as a human being unless she wore a white mask, a metaphor so on the nose it's basically a nostril. <laughs> it's less a metaphor and more a solid ending for a Jordan Peele movie. <laughs> and by the way, the only person who should have to wear a white mask to get attention is this guy. We get it, Phantom. You love, your love language is chandeliers and attempted murder. <laughs> but 
Joy's isn't the worst facial recognition story because if there's anything scarier than having algorithms ignore you, it's having them do exactly the opposite. Just last year, a man named Robert Williams was arrested for stealing five watches because facial, ra facial recognition technology decided his ID matched a photo of the thief. There's just one teensy thing, though, it was not him in the photo. In fact, he had an alibi, and even the detectives admitted the picture wasn't him, but that didn't stop him from having to pay bond, find an attorney, and go to court. And the thing is, Mr. Williams isn't alone. According to a federal study on facial recognition, Asian and African American people were up to 100 times more likely to be misidentified than white people, which is insane. At this point, you can't even call it facial recognition anymore. It's just a ridiculously expensive machine that tells you if someone has a face. So the real question here is, what's causing these racist algorithms and how do we fix it? Well, let me say it again. Computers are programmed by people and people are biased, not just white people, everyone. I know I am. For example, I think that any couple that rides a tandem bicycle is definitely plotting each other's murder. <laughs> That's a bias I have and I'm not afraid to admit it. But in the case of an AI, in, but in the case of AI, everyday biases have life-changing consequences. Basically, the bullshit we put into our computers is the bullshit that comes out. Like they used to say in church, garbage in, garbage out. Can the church say amen? Amen. Ha ha, you're a church. So <laughs> that means we need diverse faces training the AI and diverse brains building it. And if women and people of color aren't included in the AI process, the technology will continue to exclude us or even worse, target us. And we can't let that happen because Unless you're a ghost haunting an opera house, this should never have to be part of your work uniform. This has been How Did We Get Here?